This is the Uptick Newswire Stock Day Podcast, sponsored by InvestorsHangout.com. Subscribe to us on iTunes and YouTube to stay up to date on penny stock news and interviews, public information on OTC, pink sheets, and microcap stocks from around the world with your host, Everett Jolly. On today's show, I'm bringing back a returning company. It's a five-part series. The name of the company is Seafair Exploration. They trade on the OTCQB. And you can find them under the ticker symbol SFRX. And with us today is Matt Milstad. He's from Acacia Group, who is Seafair Advisory Board. He's on, and he's the largest shareholder. So uh, let's uh, have a welcome for uh, Matt Milstad. Matt, welcome to the show. Uh, very nice to be here, Edward. Thanks so much. So how did you get involved in Seafair and what led you to being the, well, one, being on their advisory board, and two, being their largest shareholder? Well, just for clarity, I don't think I'm the largest shareholder. I think outside of Kyle's direct uh, relationships, I'm probably the second largest shareholder. But uh, uh, but it, all, it started several years ago, actually, when uh, a friend of mine who was already involved with the company asked me to take a, a peek at it. And after spending probably two or three days doing due diligence on the company, I was intrigued and uh, and interested from a from a personal level. So I started uh, providing some of the the funding and became uh, an advisor to Kyle unofficially for a while, and then he officially asked me to come on the advisory board, which I've been I think four years now, and it's it's been a it's been an interesting four years as the company has continued to grow and and expand itself. Yeah, as my listeners don't know, their their key thing, well, was uh, at least three or four years ago, was treasure hunting. They, they kind of changed a little bit. Uh, now they formed two whole own subsidiaries, blockchain. And how do you fit in this, and how does that make it relevant uh, to the two companies that they're bringing into the parent company? Well, the core business is, is still the same, uh, and that being to... Uh, research and discover and recover, you know, archaeological artifacts and treasure. Um, but as has been part of the strategic plan all along at Seafair is to try to find technologies, either existing or emerging uh, technologies that could assist in the, in the core business. Um, and that has been happening the last couple of years. And then with but the implementation and the integration of these technologies into the core business has also allowed us the opportunity to determine the viability of those technologies in other markets. And so instead of being just a user or a consumer, we wanted to become a participant in those technologies. So two companies have been formed wholly owned subsidiaries of Seafair. And, and it's to allow us to participate in the utilization of technologies in other verticals, other business verticals beyond our, our core business. So uh, blockchain logistic is similar to what it sounds like. It's, it's a company formed to utilize the blockchain technology uh, in other businesses. Uh, you might say it's a bit of a vertical integration play for us because we are using that technology for internal purposes within uh, Seafair, but then utilizing either our relationships or our, our other touch points in vertical or in horizontal industries uh, to then uh, participate uh, from a revenue generation perspective of that technology being deployed in banking, transportation, in other uh, ancillary uh, businesses that need secured ledgers. Well, let's talk about uh, revenues. You guys are a little bit light on that front. That being said, your technology, it would seem to me that you guys might want to lease that technology out to at least a dozen or two dozen or different treasure hunting companies out there. Have you thought about that? That's possible, and we may get there. Uh, right now, uh, that's kind of down, down line from us. You know, the, the intention really was to take these technologies – build businesses around the use that not only funds the core business, but diversifies the, the revenue and the, and the growth potential for the company. You know, I mean, Seafarer is in a very traditional business, and historically that business has been um, performed around a lot of manual uh, labor and time-consuming operations. And by bringing in technologies, 
and applying it to a, you know, a rather stodgy <laughs> industry, uh, it allows us the ability to, to not only become more efficient, but significantly increase, increase the probability of us finding the artifacts, finding the treasures that we're looking for. Uh, and so it really serves two purposes, is uh, help the core business and then also diversify the revenue stream because you're right, we've been extremely light from a revenue side because it's, it's kind of all or nothing right. in, this, in this particular industry. And as opposed to you know, the old saying, better, better lucky than good, <laughs> uh, we don't want to rely on luck. We want to we increase the probability and become better at what we do so that you know, uh, you know, we control their destiny better. And, and that's the, the, the primary focus behind these two subsidiary companies. The other one, Eret, which relates to uh, some unique antenna uh, uh, technology development that's going on right now, would significantly enhance our capability to locate uh, items uh, below the sea, now, and actually wouldn't even limit us to just below the sea, but terrestrially also. And that can even go beyond the core, again, the core business, which is artifacts and treasure, but will allow us to diversify and get into rare earth mineral discoveries and other similar type opportunities. Well, Matt, let me ask you this. I mean, you guys have been in the search now for at least four or five years. At least that's how long uh, I've known Kyle for and, and coming on my show. How are you going to use this, this technology and what role does it play for, for Seafair? Well, it's critical to separating Seafair from the rest of the pack in terms of, of efficiency and success. You know, Kyle has done a masterful job of assembling around him a team of diverse professionals and we'll say experts in their fields, cutting across business to science to technology and, and development. And so it's taken a couple of years to get there, but we're starting to see the fruits of that labor that being in these two um, subsidiaries that have been formed as we continue to participate in the development of those technologies, implement them directly in the business, and then provide diversification for those of us who are shareholders and future shareholders um, to see um, multiple avenues from which you know, value, value can be created. We are very, very active on, uh, on a third technology that would then, you know, again, continue just to, to sew into the fabric of this company um, you know, innovation, uh, which, again, from day one, it was always intended to bring innovation into the company, use it for the core business, and then participate in the leveraging of that, of those, uh, that uh, innovation technology in other industries outside of uh, just the archaeological uh, artifacts. This wonderful... Um, um, revelation is these technologies are working now today and there are uh, activities coming up here in the in the coming weeks and months as we deploy these technologies that we think will be uh, you know high, highly results driven Matt let me ask you this and I don't even know if you're qualified to answer this question but I'll ask you anyway how many billions of dollars are sitting on the bottom of the ocean and how many sea wrecks do you think that that are still undiscovered there well Kyle has built Seafair around the concept of, of predominantly the sea wrecks that are on the east coast of Florida, of which there are hundreds. And he'd be you know, more suitable to, to answer the billions question. But to my knowledge, there's, I would say, north of 20 billion, just from the couple of wrecks that I have, have knowledge of. And so the, the opportunity uh, is, is significant, not only from a, from a value perspective, in, in terms of monetary, but also the historical, the, 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 the rich history associated with the items on the bottom of the sea are as interesting as, as the treasure itself. And, and you asked earlier what, what attracted me to the company. You know, Kyle and Seafair are, are built on the concept of integrity and honor driving everything. You know, this industry is fraught with with deception, dishonor, and, and fraud. And, you know, those of us who are on the advisory board, those of us that are on the board of directors uh, are there because our reputations, our integrity are not at risk. This is a company that's committed to doing things the right way, and it will be successful proving that you can do things the right way and still be successful and not have to, you know, fall victim to the 
historical character of this particular industry. In closing here, Matt, what would you want my uh, uh, listeners to take away from this interview? I think you know, Seafair is a is a uh, is a gem. It, uh, it it literally is sitting on uh, huge opportunities to do things again, as I said, the right way. Discover amazing riches under the sea, both archaeological and treasure. And to be able to present that to the public, make those available for educational purposes, for uh, uh, display purposes, and and let people see what happened uh, in the past and and what it still means today. Some of the technologies that were state-of-the-art when these ships were built, um, some of those concepts still apply today. So be able to bring all that to the forefront and have people experience and see it and know that it's in the hands of people who care about preserving the past and yet building value in the future is a unique combination. And that's one of the reasons that, that it attracted me and some of my other partners. Matt milstead has been my guest today. He is on the advisory board of Seafair Exploration Corp. Take a look at them. They're on the OTC markets. You can find them under the ticker symbol SFRX. Matt, I want to thank you for stopping by and coming on the show today. It's always a pleasure to have you guys uh, on the show and, and giving us an update of what's going on with your company. So thank you so much. Ever thank you and have a great day. This program is entirely sponsored and produced by Uptick Newswire, LLC, which is responsible for the content. The opinions and information provided on this program are those of the guests and those of the respective companies they represent and do not necessarily reflect those of the staff or management of Uptick Newswire. Uptick Newswire encourages all listeners of this program to do their due diligence and research when determining investment strategies that will work for them or to seek the assistance of an investment professional. The guests of this program may have paid for its distribution and are not directly affiliated with Uptick Newswire or this station.